Today, we dive into the most spine-chilling deadly bear encounters ever featured on our channel. From black bears defending their territory to hungry grizzlies on the prowl, and even lethal encounters with killer polar bears. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. In today's episode, we uncover six chilling tales of human-bear conflicts, each ending in horrifying tragedy. Welcome to Exclusion. In the heart of Canada's Banff National Park, a place of immense natural beauty and unparalleled wilderness, an agonizing chapter unfolded that would be etched into the annals of the park's history. Doug Inglis and Jenny Gis, deeply in love with each other and the great outdoors, met a fate that sent shockwaves through the serene landscape. The couple, known as Doug and Jenny to their loved ones, shared a love that transcended ordinary bonds. They were kindred spirits, drawn together not only by their affection for each other, but by an insatiable passion for the wild. A family member, choosing to remain anonymous, shared their sentiments. They lived for being in the backcountry and were two of the most cautious people I know. They knew bear protocol and followed it to a T. Their journeys into the untamed wilderness were meticulously planned, and their adventures were well documented. While in the backcountry, they checked in daily, reassuring their loved ones that they were safe. On that fateful Friday at 5 p.m., they sent a notification that they had safely arrived at their campsite, nestled in the Red Deer River Valley an area characterized by steep cliffs and rugged terrain to the west of Yahartenda Ranch. However, as night descended upon the park, their idyllic campsite turned into the scene of a horrifying tragedy. Park staff received a distress notification from a satellite device, a cry for help following a bear attack. A highly specialized team trained to handle wildlife attacks was swiftly dispatched but they were met with adversity in the form of relentless weather conditions, rendering their helicopters useless. Undeterred, the team embarked on a harrowing journey by foot. Navigating the treacherous terrain throughout the night, they arrived at the remote campsite at approximately 1 a.m. on Saturday morning, their flashlights cutting through the inky darkness. What they encountered would haunt their memories forever a grisly scene where Doug, Jenny, and their loyal dog had tragically perished in a brutal encounter with a grizzly bear. The bear, displaying unnerving signs of aggression, posed a significant threat to public safety. In a somber decision, Parks Canada authorities determined that the bear had to be euthanized. Hours later, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, RCMP, arrived at 5 a.m to transport the victims to Sunder, Alberta, a town nearly 50 miles east of the fatal attack. Grizzly bears, among the largest bear species globally, are awe-inspiring creatures that dominate their wilderness territories. Adult males can weigh between 600 to 1,500 pounds, 270 to 680 kilograms, with some exceptional individuals tipping the scales at over 2,000 pounds, 907 kilograms. What truly sets them apart is their formidable strength, capable of overpowering most animals and bringing down large prey such as moose and bison with their powerful jaws and razor-sharp claws. Their territorial nature means that encroaching upon their domain can be perilous as they aggressively defend their turf. Besides their terrestrial prowess, grizzlies are also surprisingly adept swimmers, capable of traversing long distances in the water. This aquatic ability makes it challenging for potential prey to evade them by crossing rivers or lakes. Their olfactory senses are nothing short of extraordinary, estimated to be seven times better than those of a bloodhound enabling them to detect scents from miles away and track down elusive food sources. Grizzly bears have an omnivorous diet, indulging in a diverse array of foods, fish, 
particularly salmon, are a staple, especially during spawning season when they perform the iconic salmon catching spectacle at riverbanks. They also relish the sweet bounty of berries, devouring them from bushes and shrubs. Plants, insects, and the occasional larger mammal complete their diet, making them remarkably adaptable to different ecosystems. Parks Canada, in a heartfelt statement, expressed their deepest condolences to the families and friends of Doug and Jenny, acknowledging the profound tragedy that had befallen the park. This sorrowful incident marked the first fatalities within the borders of Banff National Park in half a century. While the region had experienced a series of bear attacks during the summer of 1980, including a fatal one attributed to the infamous Black Grizzly of Whiskey Creek, such incidents had become exceedingly rare over the years. Bears, experts explained, typically retreated from an area after a defensive attack, often when startled by humans. However, in this tragic case, the bear remained in close proximity to the victims, a behavior inconsistent with the norm. Predatory attacks by bears were considered exceptionally rare. In the aftermath of the incident, Biologists would conduct a necropsy of the bear, and Parks Canada would meticulously investigate the site to ascertain the sequence of events leading to the tragic outcome. Kim Titchener, a close friend of Doug and Jenny's family, and the founder of Bear Safety and Moray, shed light on the dynamics of bear behavior in the autumn. As the season transitioned, bears entered a phase known as hyperphagia, marked by an insatiable appetite as they prepared for the hibernation period ahead. This feeding frenzy, popularly celebrated during Fat Bear Week, was their last-ditch effort to accumulate enough fat reserves to endure the harsh winter months. People sometimes think, oh, it's getting cold out so we're not going to run into bears. But they're still in the valley bottoms feeding on vegetation, and you can certainly encounter them Titchener explained, while seasons played a role in bear behavior, Titchener emphasized that the sheer number of people heading outdoors was the primary factor contributing to an increase in human bear encounters. In Banff, there are only 60 grizzly bears and less than 1,000 in Alberta. They are threatened species. People say we have too many bears. No, we have too many people, Titchener lamented underscoring the importance of bear safety courses that a majority of backcountry enthusiasts neglected to take. Half the time when people get attacked by carnivores, they're doing something that's risky or they don't have the right gear. But at times, and I suspect this was the case, you have something tragic where it's the wrong place, wrong time, in the heart of Banff National Park, where the line between untamed beauty and unforeseen peril blurred. The memory of Doug and Jenny would forever serve as a poignant reminder of the delicate balance between human exploration and the wild, unpredictable forces of nature. Their story was etched into the park's history, a hunting testament to the power and enigma of the natural world. In the heart of the Arctic, on the remote Norwegian island of Svalbard, a tale of courage and tragedy unfolded, highlighting the delicate dance between humans and the wild. This desolate place, some 800 miles from the North Pole, was a harsh and unforgiving land, where the balance between survival and peril was as precarious as a tightrope walker on an icy precipice. Johan Jacobus Koot, a 38-year-old Dutchman, had embarked on a journey to this frigid wilderness as a seasonal worker, seeking adventure and a respite from the mundanity of everyday life. Little did he know that his decision to explore this otherworldly terrain would lead to a confrontation with nature at its most savage. Long year being, the town that clung to the edge of this inhospitable wilderness was where Johann's ill-fated journey began. It was a place where the sun never set during the summer months and refused to rise for most of the winter. The northern lights danced across the dark sky, 
casting an enchanting spell upon those brave enough to call this place home, if only temporarily. But on that fateful night, Johan's dreams were shattered by a haunting growl, an eerie reminder that this enchanting wilderness was far from benign. It was a polar bear, the great and fearsome predator of the Arctic, driven by an insatiable hunger that led it to encroach on human territory. Johan's tent, a flimsy sanctuary against the relentless Arctic cold, offered no protection against the bear's might. As the tent trembled and the canvas walls quivered, Johan was abruptly awakened from his slumber and pulled into the dark abyss of the Arctic night. Panic gripped him as he found himself face to face with the formidable beast, a creature whose power he could barely comprehend. Polar bears, the Arctic giants, reign as the world's largest land carnivores, with adult males tipping the scales at a hefty 900 to 1,600 pounds, 400 to 725 kilograms, rendering them formidable apex predators in their icy domain. These massive creatures boast fur that appears white but is deceptively transparent and packed with air pockets, equipping them with a unique adaptation to blend seamlessly with the snowy landscape while providing essential insulation against the extreme cold. Their strength extends to the water, where they prove their mettle as strong swimmers, capable of covering remarkable distances, even up to 60 miles, 96 kilometers, during extended hunts for their primary prey, seals. However, the polar bear's reliance on ice as a platform for hunting seals becomes a poignant vulnerability in the face of climate change, as diminishing ice caps challenge their access to sustenance. Unlike their bear counterparts, polar bears forego hibernation, remaining active year-round, braving the harshest Arctic winters in their quest for food, propelled by their remarkably acute sense of smell allowing them to detect seals from miles away. Despite their inherent strength, polar bears face a precarious future as they are listed as a vulnerable species due to the loss of their sea ice habitat, primarily caused by climate change, which disrupts their access to seals, their primary food source. Among their captivating behaviors, female polar bears stand out for their extraordinary maternal care giving birth to one to three cubs and raising them for approximately two and a half years, imparting essential survival skills to their young. These majestic creatures bear distinctive fur patterns that serve as individual signatures, a boon for researchers and scientists who use these patterns to track and study polar bear populations. While polar bears have roamed the Arctic for about 150,000 years, their adaptation to this unforgiving environment has made them a unique and specialized species, symbolizing the delicate balance between survival and the ever-changing world they inhabit. The harrowing screams that emanated from Johan's tent were a desperate plea for help, but they were soon swallowed by the merciless jaws of the polar bear. It was a brutal and unrelenting attack, an act of nature at its most savage. Johan's life hung by a thread, and as the bear left him to the mercy of the frigid wilderness, he lay broken and dying, surrounded by the vast, desolate landscape. When the morning light pierced the Arctic darkness, the campsite was transformed into a scene of unspeakable horror, a chilling testimony to the tragedy that had unfolded. Six other campers, untouched by the bear's wrath, had been witnesses to this gruesome encounter. They had come to realize, in the most terrifying manner, the sheer power and cruelty of nature, an experience that would haunt them for the rest of their lives. News of the attack spread like wildfire through the tight-knit community of Long Urbian, shattering the serenity that had defined this remote outpost. Shock and grief engulfed the hearts of the residents, who were now confronted with the harsh reality that life in the Arctic could be both awe-inspiring and perilous. They mourned the loss of a fellow adventurer, a man who had come seeking an experience of a lifetime but had met a tragic end. Johann's friends, fellow seasonal workers on the island, 
released a statement. Their words heavy with grief but filled with gratitude for the support they had received from the townspeople and the local authorities during this heart-wrenching time. In the aftermath, images emerged of Johann's crumpled tent, a haunting reminder of the savage encounter that had taken place within its flimsy walls. The bear, the perpetrator of this gruesome act, was found lifeless in a nearby car park. Its reign of terror cut short by the swift and resolute actions of the local residents who had to protect their community. This tragedy was not the first of its kind in the region, but it underscored the unforgiving nature of life on Svalbard. The polar bears, majestic and fearsome creatures, had been pushed to the brink by a shrinking ice cap, which had robbed them of their natural hunting grounds. With their primary prey, the seals, dwindling in numbers due to the changing Arctic environment. The bears had little choice but to encroach on human territory in search of sustenance. Svalbard, also known as Spitsberg, was home to approximately 1,000 polar bears, a protected species since 1973. Until now, five deadly attacks on humans had been recorded since 1971 with the most recent in 2011 when a bear attacked a group of British students on a school trip. One young life was lost, and several others were scarred for life before the animal was subdued. The residents of this harsh Arctic wilderness were well aware of the ever-present danger, and they were advised to carry weapons when venturing outside urban areas. It was a stark reminder that in this desolate wilderness, Man and beast were entangled in a delicate dance of survival, and there were no guarantees for those who ventured into the realm of the Arctic's most formidable predator. The story of Johann Jacobus Kut served as a hunting testament to the fragility of life in the Arctic wilderness, where the line between survival and tragedy was as thin as the ice beneath their feet. It was a stark reminder of the profound and complex relationship between humans and the natural world and the profound impact that a relentless, changing environment can have on the creatures who inhabit it. In the heart of interior Alaska, amid the rugged wilderness and towering mountains, there existed a world of scientific exploration and adventure that few had the privilege to enter. Anchorage native Baron Johnson, a passionate biologist at the tender age of 27, was one of the lucky few who had dedicated her life to uncovering the secrets hidden within the untamed wilderness. She was a young woman with a heart deeply rooted in the natural beauty of Alaska, having spent her entire existence in its wild embrace. Erin's days were an intricate dance of expeditions, collecting soil samples, and studying the diverse flora and fauna of Alaska's remote corners. She had recently married her best friend, Abe Schmidt, sealing a love story that had unfolded over countless adventures and shared moments of awe in the great outdoors. It was a love story that embraced the rugged wilderness as much as it did each other. On a fateful Monday, Erin and her colleague, Ellen Trainer, a 38-year-old biologist hailing from Fairbanks, embarked on yet another expedition into the heart of the wilderness. Their mission was to gather soil samples for their employer, Alaska Biological Research Inc., a company renowned for its commitment to exploring the untouched corners of the state. Aaron and Ellen were partners in science, kindred spirits who shared a deep-rooted love for the great outdoors and a relentless drive to uncover its secrets. Little did they know that this particular day would test their courage in ways they could never have imagined. The two biologists found themselves miles away from the Pogo Mine's main camp, deep in the remote heart of the Alaskan wilderness, where they were pursuing their research. Surrounded by towering trees, the crisp mountain air, and the distant calls of the wild, they immersed themselves in their work, blissfully unaware of the lurking danger. The elusive presence of black bears with their silent prowling often culminating in unexpected rendezvous, was an unshakable reality that permeated the forest. 
It was an awareness that etched itself into the consciousness of those who ventured into these tranquil woods, where the boundary between adventure and danger was ever so fine. Although black bears are known to be less aggressive than grizzly bears, they may still pose dangers in the wild. What made it even more unsettling was the rare possibility that these bears might exhibit predatory behavior, associating humans with a potential food source and viewing them as prey. It was a sobering reminder that, in the wilderness, even the most cautious hiker could find themselves in a dangerous situation if a bear felt threatened. But danger was indeed nearby. An adult male black bear, a powerful and formidable creature in its own right, was starking them with predatory intent. Its dark coat blended seamlessly with the dense forest, its eyes gleaming with an inscrutable hunger for the two intruders in its territory. As the minutes passed, the bear's silent and stealthy approach brought it closer and closer to Erin and Ellen. The women, their senses attuned to their scientific work, were oblivious to the approaching threat. And then, in an instant, the world around them exploded into chaos as the black bear lunged at them, leaving Aaron and Ellen in a desperate struggle for their lives. It happened so suddenly that they had no time to deploy their bear spray, the last line of defense against such a predator. The women fought bravely, fueled by a primal instinct to survive. But Aaron bore the brunt of the bear's ferocious assault. The sound of their cries echoed through the forest, a desperate plea for help that went unanswered. With the odds stacked against them, Ellen managed to summon every ounce of her courage and unleashed her bear spray, not once but twice, repelling the black bear momentarily and likely saving her own life. The bear, temporarily repelled, retreated briefly but refused to give up its pursuit. It was relentless, returning again and again, driven by an unquenchable hunger and an undeniable instinct to satisfy its predatory desires. The encounter was a harrowing and tragic event, one that defied all expectations and training. In the midst of the chaos and terror, the two women displayed incredible courage, but Tragically, Erin could not escape the relentless assault of the bear, and she paid the ultimate price for her dedication to the natural world. The news of Erin Johnson's tragic death sent shockwaves through the tight-knit community of biologists, adventurers, and nature enthusiasts in Alaska. A fund was established in her memory, aimed at connecting the youth with the outdoors and fostering a love for science and exploration a legacy that would ensure Aaron's spirit lived on. The Alaska Department of Fish and Game swiftly launched an investigation into the incident, revealing that this wasn't a typical bear encounter. The initial indications suggested that it was a predatory attack, a terrifying scenario that was exceptionally rare in the world of Alaska's biologists and explorers. For Alaska Biological Research Inc., a company known for its unwavering commitment to safety and its expertise in bear country. This incident was unprecedented. They had never experienced a fatal bear attack or one resulting in injuries before. Their dedicated employees, like Karen and Ellen, were equipped with the best training and tools available to face the challenges of their field work. As the investigation continued, it became clear that the relentless predator had broken the norm, shattering the illusion of safety in a world where science and nature collided. In the aftermath of this tragedy, the company took crucial steps to enhance field safety practices, ensuring that bear guards would accompany workers in the wilderness as a standard practice. The safety of their employees became a top priority an enduring legacy of Aaron's sacrifice. Aaron's legacy served as a stark reminder of the untamed beauty and the hidden dangers that lie within the heart of Alaska's wilderness. Her unwavering dedication to her work and her unmatched courage in the face of the unexpected served as an inspiration to all who treasured the great outdoors. It was in those wild and remote places that Aaron had found her greatest joy and her final resting place 
forever etched into the annals of Alaskan exploration and adventure. In the heart of Olivia, Minnesota, the Novotny family had woven a tapestry of deep roots and enduring traditions. For generations, they have been pillars of the community, known for their tireless work ethic, community involvement, and a shared passion for the great outdoors. Ken Novotny, the younger of the two brothers, at 53 years old, called Germantown, Tennessee, his home, but his heart belonged to the wild, and that was a love he had cultivated from his earliest days. Growing up in the quiet town of Olivia, he and his older brother, Keith, had spent their youth exploring the nearby woods and fields, forging a connection with nature that would shape their lives in profound ways. It was in these woods that their shared obsession with hunting was born. Hunting wasn't just a hobby for Ken. It was a calling, the thrill of the chase, the camaraderie in the wilderness, and the quietude of the woods were his sanctuary. Whether it was the sprawling forests of Tennessee or the rugged landscapes of the Midwest, he found solace and purpose in the great outdoors. Hunting wasn't merely a pastime. It was a way of life. This deep appreciation for the natural world was mirrored in his passion for sports. During his high school years, Ken became a local hero as he led the Olivia High School football and baseball teams to victory. His charisma, boundless enthusiasm, and leadership on the field made him the natural choice for captain in his senior year. His teammates fondly remembered his unwavering spirit, the way he could inspire with a smile and a word of encouragement. The lessons he learned in those high school games, where success was sweet but defeat was never bitter, stayed with him throughout his life. After high school, Ken's journey led him to academic pursuits. He attended St. Cloud State University, where he honed his skills and developed a deep appreciation for the world of finance. His affinity for numbers, analytical thinking, and business acumen set him on a path to success. He eventually earned a master's degree in business administration from the University of Minnesota, becoming a man of both intellect and action. In Germantown, Tennessee, Ken found his place in the community, becoming an integral part of its fabric. He worked for Raymond James, a respected financial services company but he was more than just an employee. He was a mentor and friend to many. Ken believed in the transformative power of financial stability, understanding that it was the bedrock upon which people built their dreams and sought their adventures. His mission was to guide others toward that stability, a mission that reflected his commitment to improving the lives of those around him. Ken's adventures weren't confined to the walls of an office. He was an explorer, an adventurer, and he had a burning desire to explore new horizons. His yearning for the untamed led him to the Northwest Territories of Canada, where he dreamed of fulfilling a lifelong ambition. He had always wanted to hunt the majestic moose in the unforgiving wilderness of the North. In the days leading up to the journey, his excitement was palpable and friends and family shared in his anticipation. His journey took him to the border of the Northwest Territories and the Yukon, a place where nature still reigned supreme and dangers lay in wait around every corner. It was a land of breathtaking beauty and formidable challenges, a land that would test the limits of his outdoor skills. It was on that land, amidst the silence of the wilderness, that the tragic event unfolded as Ken prepared the moose he had skillfully hunted. A grizzly bear attacked. Witnesses described the bear as if it had emerged out of nowhere, catching Ken off guard. The ensuing struggle was brutal and relentless, a life and death contest between man and beast. Ken fought valiantly, an awe-inspiring testament to the indomitable spirit of the human will.
news of Ken's passing reverberated across the close-knit communities of Tennessee and beyond. His beloved wife, Brenda, who originally hailed from Lake Lillian, Minnesota, was devastated. Ken left behind a loving family, including three children, who had been the center of his world. Their lives were forever altered, and the pain of his loss was indelibly etched into their hearts. As the Novotny family grappled with the tragedy, the story took another heartbreaking turn. Keith Novotny, the older of the two brothers at 59, resided in Appleton, Minnesota. He had been engaged in a different kind of battle, one of health and resilience. While Ken was wrestling with nature in the wilds of Canada, Keith was battling for his own life, waiting for a kidney transplant. His health was fragile, and his family and friends watched, hoping for a medical miracle. The news of Ken's passing struck Keith hard, like a thunderbolt in a storm he was already weathering. Keith's wife, Peggy, stood by his side, offering unwavering support and love during these trying times. His role as the utility superintendent for the city of Appleton had earned him the respect and admiration of the community. It was a position that mirrored his approach to life steadfast, reliable, and focused on the greater good. As the days rolled on, Keith's health took a critical turn and his battle reached its final chapter. He passed away on a quiet Sunday, the very day the community had hoped and prayed for a miracle. The Novotny family had now lost two beloved sons in the span of just a few days, a tragedy that was beyond comprehension. In the wake of these heart-wrenching events, the Novotny family and their community sought solace in cherished memories. The bond of brotherhood, once a source of strength and camaraderie, now held a new significance, forever etched in the annals of their family history. The Novotny brothers, each unique in their journeys and passions, had left an indelible mark on the lives they had touched. Their legacies lived on in the hearts of those who knew them, a reminder that even in the face of the harshest of trials, the spirit of adventure, love for family, and a commitment to community would forever endure. Olivia, Tennessee, and Appleton, Minnesota, would forever remember the Novotny brothers, a testament to their enduring impact. Their stories, like the wilderness they loved, would endure through the ages, reminding us of the fragility and resilience of the human spirit. In the desolate, frozen heart of the Arctic Circle, where the very air seemed to freeze the breath in your lungs, a bone-chilling tale of terror unfolded an unforgettably horrifying encounter that would end the life of Christopher Innick. Brace yourself for the spine, tingling true story of a man ensnared by the icy clutches of nature's ultimate predator, the polar bear. Our narrative takes us to this remote and frozen paradise at the Earth's northernmost reaches, a realm characterized by its breathtaking glaciers, pack ice, and diverse marine life. The North Pole, a destination few ever set foot upon, offers a celestial spectacle known as the Aurora Borealis, a shimmering display of natural beauty. Beneath this pristine facade, however, lurks a formidable adversary, a swift, cunning, and lethal predator that claims the polar landscape as its hunting grounds. Christopher Enoch, a dedicated geologist, had stationed himself at this remote outpost to study the ever-changing snow and sea ice. He had already spent a week at this desolate location when the northern lights finally graced the night sky affording him a glimpse of its resplendent brilliance. On that fateful night, he captured several photographs to share upon his return. As the celestial spectacle concluded, he retreated to the modest caravan, the sole sanctuary in this frozen wilderness. Christopher and his colleagues used this shelter to access the samples they needed while safeguarding themselves from the merciless Arctic chill. 
Frustration loomed as Christopher engaged in a heated argument over the phone with his superiors back at the office. They clamored for more data. While he believed they already had sufficient evidence to gauge the ice's alarming depletion, his voice resonated with exasperation. How many seals do you see around here? The ice is thinning, and these chubby creatures are staying away. We don't need all this equipment. We can observe the diminishing ice by monitoring the local wildlife. Hanging up in frustration, he gazed out the caravan's window, questioning the other's unwavering pursuit of data. They aren't listening. They want more data. He muttered. Christopher's determination was in yielding. He resolved to venture out to the ice alone, collecting another sample to bolster their case. This sample would be kept at a stable temperature and transported back to the lab, reinforcing their argument. As his colleagues departed for their own tasks, Christopher embarked on his solo expedition. Traversing the ice, he walked over half a kilometer to their designated sampling area. The ice had fractured due to the relentless march of global warming, and Christopher carefully navigated the fragmented sheets as he knelt to gather samples. A peculiar sound from the water beneath him captivated his attention. He anticipated a surfacing whale, but soon realized the origin of the sound was behind him. Without warning, a colossal mass of white fur leapt from the water, hurtling directly toward Christopher. With mere seconds to react, he instinctively ducked, narrowly evading the polar bear's lethal swipe. The bear's weight, as a tray entered the water, forced the ice sheet to shift beneath Christopher's feet, propelling him farther from the safety of the caravan. Frozen in shock, he watched as the bear began swimming menacingly toward him. In this dire moment, Christopher retrieved his backpack and hurriedly searched for a solution. The bear's relentless approach left him trembling with adrenaline. With shaking hands, he sprayed a cloud of bear repellent in the creature's direction, hoping the noxious fumes would deter the ferocious predator. The bear, however, was undeterred. Its powerful paws gripped the ice's edge as it emerged from the water, closing the distance rapidly. Christopher's heart raced as he sprayed more repellent, but the bear pressed on. Realizing the urgency, he discarded his backpack and sprinted across the ice, leaping from one sheet to another, creating a protective barrier of repellent behind him. Excruciating pain radiated from his shoulder, the result of the bear's initial swipe. These majestic animals were the undisputed kings of the frozen tundra, and they possessed a range of remarkable traits that allowed them to thrive in one of the harshest environments on Earth. The polar bear, often referred to as the Lord of the Arctic, was the largest land carnivore in the world. Adult males, standing as tall as 10 feet on their hind legs, were truly imposing figures. Their immense size was a testament to their incredible strength and resilience. But what made polar bears even more extraordinary was their unique fur. Though it appeared to be pure white, their fur was actually translucent, made up of hollow hairs that reflected light. Beneath this deceptive exterior lay their secret weapon against the brutal cold, black skin. This black skin absorbed and retained heat from the Arctic sun, keeping them warm even in the most frigid temperatures. Polar bears were not just giants of the ice, but they were also masters of the sea. They were exceptional swimmers, capable of cruising through the freezing waters of the Arctic Ocean at speeds of up to six miles per hour. Their strong limbs propelled them through the waves effortlessly, making them formidable predators in the water as well. These bears primarily preyed on seals, with ringed and bearded seals being their favorites. They used the sea ice as their hunting platform, patiently waiting near breathing holes or using their immense strength to break through the ice and excess seal dents hidden beneath. One of the polar bear's most astonishing abilities was its sense of smell. 
Their keen noses could detect the scent of seals from miles away, even beneath layers of ice and snow. This incredible sense of smell was a vital tool for their survival in the vast and desolate Arctic landscape. Christopher knew that confronting the bear directly was futile. The odds were stacked against him. In his frantic flight, he witnessed the edge of his ice sheet rising slightly ahead, signaling a perilous drop into the freezing waters. He fell backward, sliding off the ice and into the unforgiving cold. Struggling to breathe in the frigid depths, he resurfaced, his body already drained of warmth. Desperation fueled his crawl back onto the ice, but his soaked clothing weighed him down, impeding his progress. The relentless polar bear surfaced beside him, closing in with relentless determination. Christopher screamed in anguish, tearing off his waterlogged garments as he ran. The bear, having lost its scent due to the water, leapt back in pursuit, this time closing the distance rapidly. Christopher's agonized cries filled the icy air as he continued his frantic escape. But fate was not on his side. With a final, brutal pounce, the bear claimed its prey, shattering Christopher's neck in an instant. The bear's triumphant feast left nothing behind but tattered clothing and a crimson stain upon the pristine ice, a chilling testament to the unforgiving wilderness of the Arctic. This is the story of Jordan Carberry in the remote wilderness of Bella Coola, a place where humans and grizzly bears coexisted in an intricate dance of nature. There lived a man named Jordan Carberry. Jordan was not your typical park ranger. He was a modern-day adventurer who had chosen to live off the grid, surrounded by the untamed beauty of the Canadian wilderness. One crisp morning, as the sun's golden fingers stretched across the land, Jordan's keen eyes spotted movement outside his rustic cabin. He had always been drawn to the wild, and curiosity was his constant companion. He decided to investigate his heart racing with anticipation. As he stepped out into the crisp morning air, he grabbed his phone, always ready to capture the beauty of the wild. It was a habit he had cultivated over the years, a testament to his deep love for the creatures that called this place home. His footsteps led him to the source of the commotion, a cherry tree not far from his home. Its branches swaying with playful cubs his heart swelled with delight as he observed the young bears at play. Their innocence and grace a stark contrast to their powerful mother who kept a watchful eye. But then, as if nature itself decided to test the harmony that had been struck between man and beast in this remote corner of the world, the tranquility was shattered. One of the cubs lost its footing, and the branch beneath it snapped. Jordan watched in shock as the cub tumbled to the ground, and then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw her the mother grizzly, a massive and formidable presence, charging toward him with a determined fury. Fear surged through him as he turned and sprinted for the safety of his cabin, which stood only 40 feet away. But the mother bear was faster than he could have imagined. In a heartbeat, she tackled him from behind sending him flying through the air. The world became a whirlwind of chaos as the grizzly fiercely attacked him. She ripped part of his scalp and half his ear in her relentless assault. Jordan, fueled by sheer survival instinct, fought back with every ounce of strength he possessed. He kicked and punched the grizzly, striking her in the face, determined to free himself from her savage grip. In the midst of the struggle, Jordan dropped his phone, rendering him unable to call for help. Bloodied and battered, he knew he had to make it back to the safety of his cabin. Summoning his remaining energy, he managed to escape the grizzly's clutches. Inside his cabin, he tracked down his keys, his heart pounding in his chest. He knew he needed immediate medical attention, and the nearest facility was a nerve-wracking 10-minute drive away. The grizzly, however, was not finished. 
She charged at him one last time as he staggered to his vehicle, a final attempt to thwart his escape. Jordan's hands trembled as he fumbled with the keys and the grizzly closed in, but sheer determination prevailed. He managed to reach the safety of his car just in time and sped away toward the nearest hospital. The journey was excruciating, every bump and turn a reminder of the brutal encounter he had just survived, but he knew he had no choice but to persevere. When he arrived at the hospital, his face and body were covered in blood, a chilling sight for the nurses who rushed to his aid. In the days that followed, Jordan was laying in a Vancouver hospital bed, a living testament to the power of human resilience in the face of nature's fury. His injuries were extensive, but he was alive a testament to his strength and determination. As he reflected on that harrowing day, Jordan knew that his love for the wild would never waver. The grizzly bear, in all her fierceness, was a part of the wilderness he had chosen to embrace. In Bella Coola, where every day was an adventure, Jordan Carberry had lived to tell a story that would forever echo in the hearts of those who heard it a story of survival, of unwavering passion for the wild, and of the enduring connection between humans and the untamed world around them. In the weeks that followed, Jordan's story continued to resonate far and wide. News of his encounter with the grizzly spread across the nation, sparking discussions about the delicate balance between humans and wildlife. He became a symbol of resilience and a living testament to the unwavering spirit of those who call the wilderness their home. Jordan's recovery was slow and painful, but his determination remained unshaken. He knew he had a unique opportunity to educate people about the importance of coexisting with wildlife in harmony. His passion for bears and the wild had only deepened, and he vowed to continue his work as a park ranger, sharing his experiences and knowledge with others. In Bella Coola, the rhythms of nature continued, and the bears, including the grizzly that had tested his mettle, roamed freely. The bond between man and beast, though tested in the crucible of survival, remained unbroken. And as Jordan Carberry looked out at the wild expanse from his hospital window, he knew that his heart and soul would forever be intertwined with the untamed beauty of Bella Coola. Thank you for watching today's episode. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe for everything. Exclusion.